go live on the YouTube side. J-Rock, thank you for the five years. I appreciate that. Welcome back. VK, thank you for the 11 months. I'm up to 226. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping. I didn't realize there were multiple servers. So we've got a few people that got into the same server and then we have a guild with people at Hoaglandia, but you can't cross server the guilds. Which is sad. Waba Jack, thank you for the 57 months. Welcome back. What's going on, Ben? Thanks for the two thirds of a year. I do a couple of the drafts to start the day, and then we'll we'll probably slam my hand in the car door that is Infinite Conquest for a little while. But I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this. What's going on, AKBN? Thanks for the 14 months. Good morning. So, this game has a draft mode in it that has been what I've been playing the most. And when you start, you get a group of heroes and then this extra, I think I call it an enchantment. You an artifact, it's an artifact. It's light bear, heroes, extra attack. Defense and physical defense, you have 5% of the total stats of all heroes for 10 seconds. Every four ultimates cast by allies creates a flame wave that deals damage. All deployed heroes lose 20% of their current HP when the battle starts, restoring 200 energy for the next 30 seconds. Yeah, we did a. Uh, uh, they paid me to play this on stream uh, for two hours on Friday, and then I played a whole bunch of it off stream over the weekend. <laughs> so this actually seems really good, but there's no healer in this starting lineup, so I would need to try and draft a Henwin or someone to heal relatively quickly, but this gives us a boost on starting energy, and one of the starting heroes that comes with his ultimate gives everybody else more, more energy. Yeah, if you're gonna give it a try, I've, I do have a link from last week for the sponsor thing you can click. Um, and if you do start playing, when you log in at the start, there's an option to choose your server. Choose server 103, because if you stick with it, that'll let you join the, join the, uh, the server or the guild. Does he technically heal? Places health potions to heal allies with low HP. He does heal a little bit. There's a roguelike card view. It's um it's technically a hero collector RPG. Um but it has a it has this draft mode in it as well. I've been doing a little bit of both. So this has some parallels to um, like team fight tactics or those other games like that. This mode in it. Yeah, it's great on mobile, man. Played, played basically entirely on mobile over the weekend. But I think because I would like to grab another healer to offset the downside of Glowing Blossom, I'm going to grab this gives me three random wilder heroes because Henwin is probably one of the best, he best healers in the game at the moment. We did not, but this is another character who gives us extra energy when she does this. So that kind of fits in with the composition that we have. And then I have to decide, do I want to spend on three random heroes again, or do I want to just grab an item here? I don't really have a tank, right? This is not a tank. It's kind of a tank. He's a front, he's a front line. He gains defense and life steal. I'll buy this and put it on him, I think. How is it monetized? It's very typical hero collector monetization. So there's limited time banners. Uh, server 103, 103. There's limited type banners that you pull, can pull characters on, but the, the draft mode's actually not monetized at all right now. I guess you could technically spend currency. You get four free drafts per day, and you could technically spend currency to get more of them, but the currency is 
uh, copious that you spend on it. So I'll be curious to see if they change how they monetize. I'm gonna save the rest of these resources here for more heroes in the next one. So let's match. So you play nine wins, gets you the most points in here, and you, you're out when you get three losses. So the gameplay is auto battle for the gameplay, but you choose your starting positions on various boards. And each, each team takes a second to put down three heroes. So I think I'm gonna choose to put my support characters down. Potions for sale. Bye. Are you lost? Follow me. We'll spread these uh, like this, I think. And then we'll put like my this is a range damage dealer. We'll we'll shove her in the back and then we'll put my melee up front here to catch aggro from whatever this is gonna be. Actually I'm gonna swap these. I think she's a little bit better than him. <laughs> Yeah, people who set up last week and have spent a bit, you're not going to want to switch servers or anything. Else. Hopefully, so the other, this company makes a different game, and in the other hero collector game like this that they make, uh, you can join guilds cross servers. So hopefully, they add that to this. All right. And then they fight. They, they have a Your real front line, and I don't have a stellar healer, so we'll see if we might lose this one. Uh, we're not going to prioritize trying to find a real healer. Well, it might be okay. There comes the big wave. Sun's back. I like, uh, someone asked me my favorite character. I really like Cassidy. He's a uh, disruptive mage. I think we're dead. Oh, his ult is almost up. He's going to get to it before he dies. He's not. I need to try. It's possible I should have rolled for three more random heroes. I need a, I need a real tank, and and a healer. Hey, look, that qualifies. This is he's a little bit worse than. He's a little bit worse than the other healer that I like, but he's fine. So honestly, I think I'm gonna, and then she's, she's an all right, she's an all right tank. Yes, this, this game's from the same people that made AFK Arena. So I'm probably not gonna deploy him. So we'll pull the item off of him. And we'll put this on her, so she's gonna be our, our lead. Might be okay. I might take that and slide it on the person we're gonna put behind our tank. Uh, this is AFK Journey. It's a new hero collector slash mobile game thing on Android, iOS, and PC. This is their PC client. So, I come to protect. Up front. Potions for sale. Throw Buy four, get one her. free. Who else needs a little pick me up? Put our healer off to the side. Then we'll put her down as a DPS and her down as another support. That's it. I played way too much of this this weekend. I'm enjoying it. This is for research. Are you lost? Try Follow me. Deploy these further back. Also, technically, typing bonuses are penalty. Typing things out here where they take increase or less damage between the four factions. And I guess, I guess we could also be technically looking at their thing. Maybe we'll have a picture here. Put them down over here. Grants, Leica allies, 15 haste, allied buffs, steal extra. Going on, level 12 human. Thanks for the half a year. Don't worry, you're delivering. 
Story's coming up! Shine stars. We, have a, we have a healer. We have a real healer. Uh, our team is actually sustaining a little bit now that it just always get chopped down like in the first battle. But we're not doing that much damage. This first strap might be a lot of damage. We killed their tank, but they killed our DPS. Oh yeah, there they go. Hey, switch over. You actually can't switch servers, which seems like a big miss on their part. to get so many spotlight caches with the limited, how limited credit bundles are. Do you spend gold refreshing daily? Do you can just buy credits with gold, Miko? The art style is very delightful. It's very, very fun and stylized. All right, we got no, an upgrade for one of our dorks. Let's see if we can manage to not get fully skunked here on the first one. Speculatively, we might get there. Is this game free to play? It is. I'm still playing Snapper I moved on. Snap's my full-time job for it, right? I'm going to play some Snap today in probably about an hour. Maybe less. We'll see how the drafts go. If we bomb, if we bomb two drafts in a row, we'll kick over to Snap sooner than later. Maybe this first one's just unlucky, though. I come to protect. Potions for sale. Buy four, get one free. Are you lost? Follow me. Oh, it shows you little arrow. That's clean on the interface. It shows you. I didn't, I didn't notice it over the weekend. I was poking on my phone. It shows you which character is going to cleanly get the bonus from the item that they have on them. I can't believe Rowan's engaged in predatory marketing tactics. Yep. There's Mythic Heroes, 15% stats. There's Legendary Mythic Heroes, 15% stats. This Scrap is for DPS research. DPS behind her, so she gets... Who else needs a little pick me up? Stats. I'm pretty sure this is the best tank in the game. So we'll see. Our draft's not stellar. We don't have an amazing tank. Don't have uh, any of Good defense and offense. So the from the hero collector side of this game, I have to say one thing that I felt that was really interesting in the genre as someone who's played a lot of these types of games is you only have to level up five characters in this game. And then all of your other characters automatically hit the level of what your lowest of your top five are. So, like, when you open a new character or whatever, you don't, um, you don't have to, like, grind it up right away. I think this is actually the first time I've played a draft. I played a bunch of those over the weekend. It's embarrassing to have that be live on stream. Yes, I was fully, fully expecting. Like I was very, I, I, I same anti. It was, I, I thought I was misunderstanding. It was like I was like, there's no way this is how this works, right? right we haven't, we have in fact fully O3. Turns out, turns out taking away 20% of our health when we don't have any of the best healers is not great.
we're gonna hard pass on the glowing blossom. All right, both of these other ones have, I think Headwind's the best healer in the game by a lot. This is, he's a pretty good tank. What is this one? Great magic fog over the battlefield, reducing heroes damage by 50% and making them lose 2% max HP per second. I actually, maybe we'll take this one. I had a really funny draft that I got eight wins with over the weekend where I did this with a bunch of stalling. I ended up getting a bunch of draws, but it was, it was amusing. This synergizes light bear heroes, which encourages you to be all one faction, which I don't really love. And I like all three of the characters in this one, and this one is uh, to start. Have you had nine wins yet? Yes, I have uh, three. I've had three or four nine win runs. Who's Smokey? I missed on. Uh, no, I'm playing on a native PC client. And if you link your Google account, it plays on mobile and PC. I don't actually know that I like getting three random light bearer heroes. I don't love a lot of the characters in this faction. I guess Vala's okay. I just take three full randoms. Gain initial energy. I guess uh, if we hit Rowan, I wouldn't be sad. At skill game. She's a uh, range DPS, yeah? It's better for the position of enemies. And then I, lo I love putting exquisite leather on Red because he gives everybody else energy, so giving him energy to start is stellar. I think this is probably a spew. Alright, we're gonna win this time. I can feel it. I probably don't want both of these just because we have a lot of sustain, so I need some damage. Sir Lucius, at uh, potions for sale. Up, Buy four, down. get one free. Are you lost? Follow me. She's so outraged, yeah. In Zen 5. Uh, are you calling me? Whew. What a tough fight. a better DPS than this. Got a lot of. I think he's a damage dealer, yeah? It's probably better than this works, man.
Give me a little bit of CC with all of her sustain, so it's good. We'll probably play... We'll probably skip deploying her and her. Sir Lucius, at your service. By the title of the swordsman. Potions for sale. Buy four, get one free. Are you lost? Follow me. Is there artifacts? Sometimes our artifact will tell you like what heroes they're playing or if they're more likely to jump into your backline. So... This character is going to jump into our backline. They've got three melees deployed. Uh, I almost wonder if I'm not deploy. supposed to deploy Ronan. I'm supposed to deploy her. Probably not. Potions for sale. Probably just him. Maybe I should have waited free. to deploy her and put the healer out so I could flex on this slot. They're going to have a lot of people jumping into us. Dracid, thanks for the 22 months. Welcome back. May the wind and frost unite as one. her up to flex in this slot here. Not sure how I feel about her. So I'm kind of just rolling here. We're looking for either items or mostly upgrades to these characters at this point. Like, we kind of have my lineup figured out. So getting multiple copies of the same hero lets you upgrade them to Legendary, and then if you hit four more, they upgrade to Mythic. We're not playing Graveboard Thing, so... Take that one for the upgrade on that. And then we're out of currency here, so we'll jump right in. Basically, always want our tank Buy and four, Ronin get one free. and our I think. Me? And probably always want this guy, too. They have two tanky Dorcos, so I probably Are do want lost? her still for her defense. Follow me. She should the defense. Of the swordsman. She's one of her abilities. Yeah, I'll probably play Snap today. I don't know. Last couple days we played Snap were really not stellar days of gameplay, so I'm not in a huge rush to get over to it. Uh, I even see how the drafts go here before we decide whether or I'm ready to kick over to that. Guys ended up in the back line here with their uh, big rhino looking thing. Shoves all of them around. And you'll note that there is a timer here on the right side. 
So you can you can technically draw these routes if both sides just have too much to stand. But we both have a headwind here, so that's possible. You have to pay money to advance in this game. So this draft mode is there's no leveling up your characters in advance or putting money in it to get an advantage or anything like that. But they do have a typical hero collector RPG PvP arena, which is with characters where you make your numbers go up and the longer you're playing, the bigger your numbers are. So I'd, I'd assume that one is the more you're spending, the more you have. Might go to a draw. Which, if this if this team composition is being successful, I'd assume I'm going to draw against other compositions that have a lot of sustain and something that happened a couple times in this run. I drafted I drafted with this artifact over the weekend and I'm getting three draws over the course of like 16 games. He's died on either team yet. How's the game been outside of this mode? Outside of the mode, the game is a, seems like a fairly well done, mostly voiced RPG game. They also have a like roguelite style mode where you like draft abilities and power up for the characters that you're playing. Our sustain works. Whatever would have been better off with a second DPS instead of the defense shred, I'd like to hear. We'll try that the next one. Freaking right now, just like pushing the entire squad across the screen. Easy. Oh, almost got that one in there, healer popped. Every sword is a witness. If you have extra res- Draws are technically beneficial if you have extra resources in the later game because they give you a new role on the store. But you don't get any resources for buying things in there off of a draw, so... Hey, Galdrea, thanks for the 56 months. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Okay, so this is an artifact that specifically powers up one key character, Carolina. So she's a backline, um... By the title of the swordsman. Sir Lucius. Uh, what's uh, potions for sale. She's Buy a backline more, get one free. That's what I'm gonna want. Uh, honestly, I think I'm gonna put her in instead of this one. Just have two characters that deal damage. Um, I, this is for research. This new staff update looks interesting. Yep, no Shang Chi here. Oh, I missed that they had a. Oh, they, this is... Don't worry, your delivery's coming up! two guys that jumped into our back line here. Alright, our, our knight was like, okay, we're gonna shield the back here. I think we're gonna be good here. What's going on, Rufus? Thank you for the 17 bucks. Welcome back. Uh, someone said stopping for ultimate seems a little bit slow. I'm actually, you can click on 2x one if you want the combat to go faster. I just added on 1x, I wanted to talk about what was going on a little bit more. Penguin Drew, thanks for the entire year. Welcome back. It looks like we're good here. Oh, I guess I forgot. I can, Cassidy's kind of sustained too as far as DPSs go because she stuns when she hits them up. Yeah, this one looks like a win. That 
this point, we've got our composition for the team pretty well set up, so I'm gonna mostly be rolling the shops looking for items to power up the dorks or duplicates of them. Gray Bush, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. I don't think I'm using her, but buying, upgrading her gives us um, artifact experience, and we might sub her in at some point, so we'll pick it up. Increase the target's damage taken by 20%. Six seconds of inflicting enemy heroes with control effects. That could be good on her. Oh, this is that one. This, this item is insane on your tanks. It gives a 12% shield every five seconds and it taunts things. That is 100% going there. And this heals every few seconds. I'm going to throw that on our healer. Actually, maybe I'll put that on the rogues that way, because he's kind of front fighting. This one do heals the ally placed one tile in front of it once every five seconds. Oh yeah, I'm gonna re-roll looking for some duplicates that are works perfect, so we'll grab that. Consume 10% of current HP every Three seconds. I should probably read these first. Blocks the first fatal blow. Now nah, I think we're mostly just sustaining. Let's kick it. I don't know. I don't know that I have a good Shang Chi comparison for this game because there, are, there aren't any characters that make me irrationally angry. Increases the attack speed of the rearmost ally hero by a hundred. Okay. Sir Lucian. Potions for sale. Bye for Potions for sale. Are you calling me? So they're gonna have some kind of caster or marksman in their back line. Looks like it's gonna be Sika. This is for research. Oh, well, they have a bunch of squishies. By the title here, of the swordsman. This guy pounces in, so I guess I'm, I'm gonna put her up front because he's gonna jump in on our dorks. I'd like her to not get jumped on, ideally. Yeah, I was I was not expecting a drafting game in this at all when I took it as a sponsor thing, and I was very pleasantly surprised that I was like, oh, I'm gonna play a bunch of this. <laughs> Good. She's just like the perfect DPS for this type of stally team comp. Ariad honestly is pretty good too. He has a, he has a stun on his thing. Yeah, these are these are our five for sure. Most of them at this point. How we're deploying based on the maps the teams we're playing into. My shield is unbreakable. All right, gamers, it's about that time. I'll see you in 120 seconds after some adverts. We're gonna run this draft out at the very least, then maybe we'll consider snapping a little bit after. All right, thanks everybody for hanging out. of the client while we're while we're waiting for the ads to roll. So there's an arena mode. And the arena mode is kind of like what these types of hero collector games are known for that are kind of like whale wars. And part of it is spending dollar dues to get specific characters, but also um, you have to like wait to a degree. Like there isn't really a clean way to spend money just to cleanly level your characters up. And the, AF, the AFK part of the game is inside of this area you collect experience books when you're gone away from away from the game so there is a hero collector aspects these are all characters that i've gotten from playing so far that like have levels that you level up and this is separate from the draft mode
the honor, honor duel here is the draft mode that we're playing. But there's like a full RPG in here with like quests that we're working through on the on the world. I played a bit of this over the weekend. It's pretty chill. When did this come out? Last week. So one of the big things to me that I was shocked from the hero collector aspect of it that's very different than what a lot of these games do is normally when you open a new character in this type of game, you have to like spend a tedious amount of time grinding them up. And it seems like they cut pretty much all of that tedious grinding from the game. So like you can see here, you have five characters here and you spend experience to level them up, but all your other characters are the same level as your lowest one here. So you're only ever leveling five things and your equipment on your characters isn't per character where you have to like squeeze out and change around and figure out who you're building. It's per class. So you can see here, uh, my mages supports marksmen and tank. They're the ones, marksmen and tanks especially, are the ones I've been using the most. So like I put the most resources into upgrading their gear, but then all of my characters that are this class of character share, share the stats from this gear. which is another nice from the, the hero building collector side of the game. All right, so we're looking for duplicates and useful items. Increased damage to enemies three tiles away or further by 30%. Where does she shoot? She only has range three, so probably not useful. Or there's 50% of loss HP when inflicting control effects on opponents. His, uh, his ult is a control effect, right? Immobilizes. I bet this counts as a control effect too. I wish there, I wish there was some more clarity on stuff like that. Decreases their defense. Put that on him and move his artifact to some levels. A copy of you. A copy of you. And then we're out of currency to buy stuff. Oh! Oh wow. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that one. I should have I should have bought this so I could equip it this turn instead of just clicking on this. I keep doing that, not reading that. This gives all of our characters with epic equipment 10% extra stats. We've got two epic equipments already. So let's give us 10% stats on three people if we pick it up, which sounds great. But we can find another epic equipment for a fourth one later. They also have the sustained artifact here, so there's probably a real chance this one's gonna be a draw. <laughs> Potions for sale. Buy four, uh, get one free. Um, are you calling me? Yes, you're. You you are. There's never a risk of feeling like you wasted your resources when leveling people, which feels stellar. Smokey. They have two tanks up front. I think I'm going to take this guy and put him me. off back here so he can loop around behind. This is for and then I'm going to put her back here so that way she doesn't get caught by them doing the same. Yeah, they tried, they tried to do the same. Now the downside is putting my characters on like this a little bit is that my paladin shield doesn't catch as many of them, but that seems like it's probably fine. Wow, his immobilization there was so good. He just shredded all of them. All right, not going to be a draw. It looks like we're going to torch them. Putting, putting him, I like, 
I like that there's a positional element to the game, to this game mode before your characters go in an auto battle. The place three, place three, and then you care about the positioning is a really, really slick way to do it. So I'm gonna put this on her so all my Dorcas with epic get um, him, get some extra stats. Deals 100% true damage once when inflicting control effects. That seems good. I can put that on her, because she, she's stunned. Her knocks back. And then that's uh, that's another epic artifact for getting 10% extra stats with the other one that we have. Yeah, Reroll, looking for some upgrades here. Oh, well, that's, that's lovely. All right, we owe three the first draft, but this was looking really good. I think we're I think we're pretty well set on artifacts too here. We might get an upgrade for him at some point, but otherwise, I think we're just saving resources to uh, roll upgrades on our heroes. At your service. At your service. Potions for sale. Buy four, get one free. This game board does not have room to allow us to maneuver um, characters are around. Are you calling me? So I'm just gonna have to walk it, walk it, walk up the front door here. It's PvP. This mode is PvP. Yeah. Morning, Andrew. Yeah, if you're someone that tries out AFK Journey Day and you make an account, by the way, make sure you join server 103 at the start, because if you stick with it, I have a guild on that server that y'all are welcome to pop in. This is a character that jumps into our back line, which means I want to deploy my mage close to everybody else, so that way she's not going to be alone when Vala jumps into the back line. Although Cassidy looks like she might have been dying here. If Headwind hits her heal before anybody dies, we should be good to go. Two 
that because I have to imagine our fighting people are going to push through these last two. Kill their, their lone tank in 20 seconds, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully? <laughs> Maybe not. I wonder if they're... I forgot to look at their... What's it called at the start of it? Wow, they might actually draw this. Their, uh, their artifact might be one that, like... There's some artifacts that the longer the game goes, the more your thing gets uh, defense. Yeah, they actually drew. Their tank survived at the end. That's a shame. I think we're going to win that for 10 to 15 seconds. Sometimes when they draw, it's very clear that, like, neither team was going to make inroads. We were, we were definitely going to win that. Ooh. Recovers 300 energy on every ultimate cast. I think I'm going to pin that one because that'll be, make his first ult a little slower, but it means once he ults, he'll keep ulting. And then this gives him, we'll get, is an epic one, so we'll give him 10% extra stats from the greater that we have. So we don't have enough resources to buy it now, but if we win the next one, we will. At your service. Potions for sale. Buy four. Just gonna fill um, these up the center here, and then we'll decide where we want to put him and our DPS based on what they deploy. I should remember to click on their effect. Vince, allied heroes using ultimates and consumed energies to deal bursts of damage. Okay, so I definitely want to put him over here. This is I think we'll put research. her back here because they've got some squishy backline, so I want him to walk up and around. Oh, yeah. He's gonna walk right on in here. Don't worry! Your delivery's coming up! Whoa, that was a Big burst. We hit a heal before Ronin dies? We did? Okay. Oh, he just grew all of them. That's pretty good. Uh, server 103. 103. I think we're, we're clean here. Looks like we're clean here. The, the guild features open at AFK stage 103. Alright, so I'm gonna grab this and swap out Rune and Tino. We'll have to see how that goes in the first game. There's a chance that slowing his first ultimate is not good. But if we can survive long enough to have that happen, it's pretty good for us. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with our artifacts at this point. Although I suppose, I wonder if these stack. Usually they say when they don't stack. Honestly, I might I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna swap her staff out. Twenty percent extra stats sounds lovely. want to roll an extra copy of either of these guys at this point. Next. Phenomenal rolls, and I even get to pin pin one of her for the next one. The necklace is good. Cast ultimate once without costing energy, but reducing the carrier's damage. Dealt by 50%. Oh, that's insane on Ronin. Ronin. I want to put that on him, right? He's good for the healers too. It's fine for the healer. I think I wanna I think I wanna put it on him so I can just supercharge 
everybody else. <laughs> Honestly, should I pin both of them? Is that crazy? I could put it on both of them, yeah? So this is actually a sub game mode inside of the main game. This game is primarily a hero collector RPG, but there's a few different sub game modes inside of it series. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pit. We're gonna put a bunch of this here. If we win this next round, our round after should be insane. At your service. Potions for sale. Yes, this game Not mode is an auto battler food. like TFT or Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Is an accurate assessment of it. I'm gonna deploy these over here and then we'll decide where this goes and her. Actually, I'm gonna leave a space here so I could possibly put uh, Pump Cassidy in here and the group of people. I don't but want him to walk swordsman. into their tank if possible, although it's gonna get directed there regardless. Yeah, I do just put him here and let him, I really, I really want him to be able to get around to the back. I wanna put him here in case they deploy anything back this way. This is for research. We'll put Cassidy in the middle. No, you don't pull for any characters in this game. Yeah, they're in this game mode. So the game, the game has, some character pulling stuff in the regular hero collecting PvP mode, but it is separate completely from this. When you pick the server, at the login screen, there's a server button in the top right. Before you before you start. Another solid win for us. And then we're gonna pick up two of those necklaces to make uh, Rowan. Do I need two of them? I don't know if Henway that. I don't know if that one's actually green on it. You're not. Oh wait, are we not gonna get this? This has got much closer than I was expecting to. Although I guess we're back here inside the gunner. Right, that was closer than it looked like it was gonna be at the start. Yes, Graveborn definitely seems like the best faction overall. Agree, agree with that. I, I really like the art style in this game. I've been, I played a bunch of this over the weekend. We were, we have a sponsored link for the game. So if you're checking out, I appreciate it if you click that, but they are not explicitly paying me for this time on stream now. Our contract was for two hours last week that we did. Just playing this to start this morning because it seems fun. Actually, I think this staff might be better on her to give her more regular ultimates. And I think this one might just go unused, honestly, at this point. Wait, what did I do? Okay, I got that right. So he's. He is going to get a free ultimate. She will get energy back every time she ultimates. She gives extra stats. He has a shield. He heals when he does a control effect. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to unpin this one. I don't think I need this like it. And at this point, we're kind of unlikely to have upgrades for a little bit, because I need, we need four of them to upgrade, but our team comp's pretty solid, so. Whoo, I lied, that's so lucky. <laughs> Sick, all right. And then Mythic's the max tier on, on a character. One of the things I'm unsure on is you technically, 
you technically get artifact experience or upgrading other characters. So like one thing I'm not 100% sure on the balance of what I'm supposed to be prioritizing is, am I supposed to just aggressively reroll to upgrade my existing characters? Or am I supposed to pick up characters I'm not gonna use to push the artifact experience up? I'm not 100% sure what's possible there. Well, I max I've been maxed artifact a handful of times. I've definitely had nine win runs without hitting the max on the artifact. Uh, this is a game mode inside of the game. Right, what's their artifact? So they're a bunch of light bearer heroes, which is fine. We're neutral into those. Sir Lucius, at your service. At your service. This is for Actually, research. I don't want to show them her, so I don't want them to know sale. that we have a mythic Buy over four, her. get one free! Are you calling me? We're gonna deploy these back here and then we'll put her here and then where we deploy uh Aaron will depend on who they deploy and where. By the title of the swordsman. Put him up over here this and then we'll put is our for research. Yes, back here. Yes, it's definitely true that sometimes you get an artifact that just doesn't mesh with your current draft at all. God, his ultimate that groups all of them and CCs them is so good. Aaron, Aaron and uh, Cassidy definitely seem like the best DPSs for this kind of stalling. They like deal damage while also disrupting the opposing team. I got eight wins with this stall artifact over the weekend. This scout's definitely better than the one I had there. This is run through to nine. It's, uh, seven now, and we only have one loss. I don't think I'm looking for any legendary artifacts because I think um, I, we have the one that gives all of our epic artifacts 10% stats. So I think I'm happy just getting the stats. I'm just gonna reroll. These are aggressively looking for our duplicates of our heroes. So part of me wants to hit this to get the artifact upgrade, but getting double on Rowan makes me want to just roll aggressively to try and hit him on Mythic. That <laughs> keeps, get out of here. Hey, I got two more rolls looking for a Rowan. That's fine. We have a loss to give here still, so there's a good chance we hit Mythic on him before this is over, which should max the sensor for us. There's an artifact that makes your tank immune for eight seconds. Yeah, but I don't know if that's very useful in our build. Our tank's like been never been in danger of dying. I feel like this map is bad for us because it doesn't give uh, this guy a clean way to get into what people are doing. Shoots rock shells once at once. Enemy heroes who have taken control effects are forced to displace every three seconds. They have a bonus to wilder heroes. Sir Lucius, at your service. Potions for sale. Buy four, get them. Uh. Are you calling me? I think we're just lining up everybody over here. I'll put Cassidy in the back and we'll put him up front so he can dive in. By the title of the so This is for research. They have a mythic healer. They have three mythics. Okay. My waves of knowledge 
Which we both have uh, what's the name here on grouping people up. I feel like I need to slow it down so I can see what's happening. <laughs> So they keep grouping our guys, but that means that Lucius's divine shield uh, heals or shields everybody in our team, which is nice. Neuron's gonna group them up again, and so is she. We need, we need him to live. Oh no! I think that's it for us. Hedowin, Hedowin's ult was a little bit short of saving Aaron there. It's gonna be our second loss. Their tank got close there, but they just have too much healing. Yeah, the gurney tank is solid. If, if Hedowin would have gotten her heal off right before Arian would have died, I think we'd have maybe been okay to get a draw here, but without him, we're definitely not beating them. I think our best hope is getting a draw to this one, which I guess might be possible, but it seems unlikely. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully we can roll a second mythic here and still push up to nine. Starvin one, thank you for re-upping that prime for the second month. Appreciate it. She's already max, which is sad that we see a double for her. It feels bad to buy a double when I only need one, but that's where we're at in life. We already have a love a double for him. If I spend 45 on these, we'll hit the artifact match, which I think is what we're supposed to do. on that. Uh, we're not excited about it. Oh, punished. <laughs> I just, I can't know that that's going to be waiting for us, right? So, okay. If we win this eighth one, we'll have him guaranteed mythic for the last round. So one to, one to two more rounds here. You can sell them? How? How does that work? There's a, there's a mechanic? Formation? Hero sale. How have I never known that was there? Do I lose... everything chat <laughs> well that's that's great to know obviously not a good rate of return on there but hitting hitting that's insane okay watch us watch us get torched anyways I hate this map. This map is so bad for us since we don't have anybody that formally jumps. Sir Lucius, at your service. Mm. Are you calling me? Potions for sale. Buy four, get one free. By the title of the sword. This is for research. Uh, 
And they have, uh, their grave board, which means they have a 50% bonus against us. Or against their light bearer heroes. Let's get this instead. It's gonna be an uphill battle from here. That was a solid grouping from him, holy. No, Cassidy! No, damn it! Yeah, it, def it definitely feels like the the grave board is the the best team inside of this. That's sad. Absolutely massacred. All right, I guess we'll snap for a little bit. At least we had one that wasn't completely embarrassing. Huh? Experience level my dork before we go. It was an accident. Did you not play for Akron and Star Real? Nope. I think I'm gonna pull for the the ice lady and the adventurine on their next banner. I think is my plan for resources over there. Is my link just for the PC version? No. Works on works on mobile too. I can paste it on the YouTube side, David. I am I am gonna use my other infinite tickets up out of a sense of obligation. Out of a mixture of a sense of obligation and how much I hate myself in general. subs you can still use your channel points to chat while we're in sub only mode during snap but especially given the texture of the current metagame i'm putting sub only mode on for chat before we start snapping have some adverts we're gonna finish this gold conquest run when we get back and then set fire to my infinite tickets let's drag it out i don't know if my manscape promo discount is still click that click that link it'll say at the top if it's 20 percent off still yeah, AFK Journey came out last week. Infinite Conquest makes me miserable. Yeah, I'm about there too. Mage Cub thinks this. And the biggest, the biggest problem with Infinite Conquest is that even when I'm snapping aggressively, by the time you, if you ever make it to match five, it's just so much time to get there that it feels, it feels like a real bad. I wish there was an option to clear these notifications so that I would actually click on the thing they gave me. Oh, Danger Zone. Thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Vicara Z, thank you for the seven months. And Tempest and B, thank you for the 16. Stand up for a little bit. Standing, a little bit pedaling. Stretch the legs out. It's better breath of fresh air to waste some time on AFKJ rather than snap for a little bit. Yeah, angry lever. <laughs> good, good change up. Cola, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. We'll see if we get a real OTA this week or if they just like 
shave a little bit off the top of Thanos to no effect again. <laughs> I feel you, Socio. Is Thanos still the main problem? I, so I, I talked about this a little bit in the complaining channel in the subs discord the other day, because it's definitely a little complainy, but I definitely agree that generically, I'm not just exhausted by Thanos. It's more of a, if I'm not playing a linear deck, it's a Shang-Chi Eliath deck. And I don't, I don't know that that's exclusively a Thanos problem. And maybe the format warps and changes that adjusts a little bit with Thanos, if Thanos is no longer the de facto best thing. It's hard to predict what the fallout from that is, but I definitely, I definitely agree that part of it is, um, is more than just Thanos with the existing metagame for me. Surfer gamers. Just started a conquest run is coming to a halt due to tech cards. Yeah, I just don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Second dinner very clearly loves tech cards. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> For this version of Surfer or the Toxic One, I think they're kind of different decks. So I could brood right surfer middle. They only Loki'd four, three cards out of our deck. So the odds they have something like brood surfer are low. I think it's, I think it's just this to play for all three. Victory. For the entire year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Get your sword to go with that shield. Oh, shit! 
I have... I have an exciting non-April Fool's life update from over the weekend. My, my wife and I decided to be real adults for the first time in a long time. And we took five carloads of stuff out of my garage to various donation dumpsters and recycling facilities. And my garage for the first time in the five years since I've lived in this house is not a complete and total disaster. It's kind of, it's kind of glorious. How many of those items were domes? None of the domes left, left the house. You not pack your car in the garage. So my house has a three car garage. Uh, up until this weekend, it was mostly a one car plus stuff garage. Now it is successfully a uh, two car plus stuff garage. turn is just like Shaw Surfer, Gladiator Surfer. Sander, thank you for the 10 months. Welcome back. Yeah, two, uh, two of the car bays in my garage are um, built, built out a little bit. So... We have like a small bench, workbench slash table in there too, and a chest freezer on top of all this stuff. Body da car in the garage looking fancy. Yep. All right, so if I do this, I gain 13. 17, I go to uh, 23 here, and they passively have plus two, so they go to 19, and they only loki two cards, and I feel like they're not beating 13 here if they're beating 23 here. I could be wrong to play for here, and maybe I'm just supposed to go here, here, though. Is this better, actually? This is bigger, yeah. Let's get speed to 25. I think this is better, actually. You tried putting all your stuff into the cornfield to never be seen again. They're building houses behind my house, chat. Victory. Actually, I actually have a good picture of it because my, uh... This weekend, this weekend was also 60 degree weather in our first, our first mow of the season. There's, this used, to, this used to be corn, corn and other things, other things, we're taking houses for people, yeah, so there's one going up here, there's another one over here to the left behind the tree. They're gonna ruin my view, honestly, I'm just hoping when they build the house that's directly behind mine, it's tall enough to cut the wind. Because one of the one of the real downsides to living on the edge of town like that is um, the wind comes off of the field and doesn't do anything, or just hits hits the house and it's loud. Uh, the big building in the way back is some type of financial services building. Phenomenal draw. 
I'm mostly just snapping because it's two days left of the season of this is Gold Conquest. So I'm just snapping on one. Am I going to need a fence? I have no idea. More yard maintenance. My dad is a whole acre and I don't envy him compared to my quarter. Yeah, actually, that's the that's the real secret to why we added extra stuff, Chet. When we added the patio and the playset, it was less less grass to cut, which is lovely. Yeah, bud, come on. It's gold conquest. Snap the button. This should mean we're winning over here, which will let me play two threes next turn without hope, which is fantastic. Draw a kill daddy so we can get rid of this Quinjet before they love me. JK, I have Mobius, that's fine. We still want to draw a kill daddy so we can Nova the last turn, I suppose. Actually, am I playing this here? I don't know if I'm contesting the center or not. It might be right, it might be wrong to contest the center. Fucking Coulson, chat. He's such an asshole of a guard. I've, I've talked about this a lot, but like completely unironically, I lose more games against Loki to fucking Agent Coulson than just like anything else in the deck and it's not close. Like it's just it's just the card that beats me the most frequently by a wide margin. I hope five holds the center. He's just such a high cube equity card. Generates so many bangers. Yeah, Helicarrier has a lot of similar equity. Teenage Warhead Center to blow them out. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're aware of what Asteroid M does. Should, uh, should have muted this motherfucker before the game started ticking. I'd say I'm just gonna leave. I don't really feel like playing 10 to 6. This opponent's playing slow as molasses. I've got six infinite. Six infinite tickets to burn. I just go set those on fire rather than continue to play against this person who's terribly slow. We hit a couple of slow opponents in infinite conquest, so we're not gonna get through our six tickets today as is. Matchup polarization and opponents taking the entire rope. The Marvel Snap Conquest experience. Truly, truly interesting and good gameplay. What's going on, Hyper Time Hero? Thanks 
Thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. Ever since watching your AFK stream at Friday beginning non-stop ads, right? I mean, that's not related to the stream. The game just came out and they're doing a big advertising push. supposed to show them what deck I'm playing or not here. I don't have a uh, Deadpool yet though, which is nice. Oh, I should have played Hope last turn. I'll probably do a Phoenix Force run today, though. Deck's real good. Enough said, Bob. We haven't, have a, haven't had a dev, dev update yet. And it feels kind of strange to release it on the on April 1st, but the season's tomorrow, so. Arnim Zola. I'm gonna spend one cube to confirm that they're playing Arnim Zola. This is better against not Arnim because it makes this bigger over here. I don't think they could test uh, 14 here anyways. Are you fucking kidding me? Wait, do we win anyways? We win by one, yeah, because of the Murray Island? Goodness. I guess we I guess we needed Wolverine not to go right, huh? Victory! Why do we won that uh that two out of three? Needed the the surfer though, correctly assessed that. We needed the points on the left. Thanks for the 19 months, Super Retroid. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Probably do a couple of drafts to start tomorrow morning too, Edmund. Is is my plan.
Or play Gladiator first to try and spike the dog. I want to get Hope down ASAP. Actually, it's this, yeah. I want to just turn off their saber tooth if they blow it up. And death. Well, death. Turning off death, I could wait a turn to do. The reason, the reason to play Mobius on four is to cut the cut the saber tooth off. We'll do this, and then next turn we have the option to surf for Absorbing Man in either order. Dennis Supa, thank you for the 16 months. Welcome back, appreciate it. Just bearing into lower collection level people in Infinite Conquest Bed. I think the way this has ended up, I want to play for all three. We ended on we ended on Brood. Race car, thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. I have some unfortunate news about tomorrow's season rollover chat. Red Hulk is likely a new Thanos card. Red Hulk. Red Hulk is a. Somewhere between a 6.15 and a 6.19 in most of the games you're going to play with it. It's very likely a new Thanos card. Replacing Blob or in addition to it. It's having two really big things. I think, I think actually, I think replacing Blob is unlikely. I think if it if it plays there, it's an addition too. Bodies ready to pull Venom out of their deck. Are you sure? We're just fine.
We have not ever had a new season video yet. Hey, Wolf, thanks for the six months. Appreciate it. Jeff, you scared me with AFK Journey. Glad to see you back on Snap. Yeah! My children are really greedy and insist on eating. Sometimes even three times in the same day. So, we'll be here snapping as long as it pays the bills. So, Shaw goes up to... Seven, and then it goes up to 11, and then 15, and then these get 12, and then in the center, I'm down, or I'm up 1 to 14, and then I go up 8 to 22, and then on the left, I'm going to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, these days. One hit, two more. Shall take it That is an unlucky hit for us. Good golly. We have what if we put Shaw on the left? No. Plus 15 there. Well, I counted all my numbers correctly, at least. We have that going for us. What's going on, Scruff McGruffin? Thanks for the 53 months. Welcome back. Wonder what the last card is. The inclusion of Sabretooth kind of makes their last card a wild card. Could be literal anything, ranging from Bucky, Bards, and Nova to other more stock things. Yeah, it could also could also be a tech card like Shang. Last card ever, Zola. Zola's already in the deck tracker, gamers. Going on, Navier. Appreciate the 70 month resubscription. Welcome back. Orange wasn't going to be useful, anyways. Can we draw hope? Mr. Stark, thanks for the 25 months. Assume everything lives on the left. How big does that put me to there? It's, uh, 4, 9, 11, 15. 
Let's get Artem Zolid again is the problem. So we're retreating, so we won't waste time Let's retreating see. later. Let's take seems to not have a great destroy matchup. Probably makes it a bad choice for this. Destroy is at a pretty high popularity right inside of Infinite Conquest. Thanos, Thanos cutting Professor X has opened the door for both Destroy and, Sh and Phoenix Force to, to rise up in uh, in numbers. Yeah, Saber, Saber Tooth needs a complete and total redesign. <sighs> yeah, boy, I lost Silver Surfer. Going into uh, an off meta destroy play a Yandu that's good at sniping our Silver Surfer also. Has not been stellar. East, it wasn't Surfer. They do it might be like brood hit monkey next turn get a six power monkey on the left would i rather have three more stats or would i rather turn off Turn off death. They haven't blown up that much stuff. Last, yeah, for flexibility, that's probably true. I should. I do this, it gives me three, seven, eleven in the middle. It gives me eighteen here, and it gives me uh fourteen twenty-two here. Think so. I don't know. There's probably a few ways to eat this recess. What's going on, high voltage? Welcome back. Get you a sword to go with that shield. Yeah, another part of me was wondering, maybe I'm just supposed to go Surfer into Absorbing Man and assume they can't compete here and just like hope that one wins it or if one doesn't win it that we win here and here by getting three Surfer triggers. Enough said, Bob. 
Their last card is in fact Shang-Chi. Uh, Marvel Snap. It's fine. This deck, this deck doesn't care about Mobius. It doesn't care about Shang. It's one of its most endearing features. Did their line beat us doing nothing? It did not. But they don't know where the retreat button is, so. Gen tr truly, genuinely, at this point, if Second Dinner doesn't feel like adjusting Shang-Chi, they should just make this, this game 13 card decks and make it not optional for people. Like, stop. Stop making my decks one card smaller. Just make everything bigger if that's what you want, and we'll call it, we'll call it a day. I could do is give you another card that ties the shank. Yeah, fair. My next trick. I don't know. I think the suggestion of Shang should be symmetrical. I think it's very silly. It, it, like 90% of cases, Shang being symmetrical doesn't functionally change the card. I think it's one of those things. I think it's one of the very clear examples of why talking about balance is silly because most of the suggestions people make are fucking stupid like that one. All hail Hydra. All right, enjoy your energy, bud. Glad I could help. Yeah, symmetrical is that it kills on your side too. It's a very, very common gamer suggestion for what they should do to change Shang. Need, I need a brood to win this game, as is we can't beat death. Well, I guess we would have died to death left regardless, yeah. <sighs> yeah, try and win two in a row. Escaped. Seems unlikely. Matchup seems real bad. I think Negasonic is absolutely atrocious and unplayable, and that's why I've got her in my deck for this Infinite Conquest run. Any other engaging and intelligent questions this morning, Twitch chat?
50-50 probably decides the game. feel like a really good use of your time to spend 40 minutes playing a match of Conquest and have it get decided by something like this. <laughs> have some adverts, gamers. We'll be back in two minutes. Escape. <laughs> oh, man. It's nice. That on this channel, the mods are as abusive and obnoxious to the streamers. I don't know how you get any viewers. I get plenty of viewers because there are lots of reasonable people that like me to call out comments like yours and point out how fucking stupid and entitled you are. There are plenty of places on the internet where you get to go and watch and have zero repercussions for your actions. This is not one of them. Orfeo Matar, thank you for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Bushman, thank you for the five gifted subs. I think that is, I think that's genuinely one of the most interesting slash amusing cognitive dissonance things that happens on the internet. Where people are like, nobody likes you, or I can't believe anybody likes you. And it's just like, man, the fact that you can't separate your personal dislike from something with the fact that objectively there are a bunch of metrics here and people watch what I'm doing and appreciate what I'm doing. It's like it's like when some random shitter is like, Jeff has blocked everyone on Twitter. And it's like, listen, dear first name bunch of numbers. I have 20,000 followers on this platform and you have 15. So if I have everybody blocked, what is your problem? Pushman, thank you for the gifted subs. That's very generous of you. Good morning, good morning. And the anime profile picture. <laughs> oh, welcome back, Hollywood. Good morning, good morning. I had a, I had a first on Twitter the other day. I had a, a transphobe post something shitty in my mentions, so I quote tweeted, calling them out as being shitty. And before I could go back and block them after quote tweeting them, they had already deleted their account or changed their numbers. They were a, they were a first name bunch of numbers. And I was like, I want to make sure I block them so they don't show up with crappy stuff in my mentions again. And by the, time, by the time I went to do it, the account was gone. And I was like, oh, not used to, not used to having someone, someone do that, huh? Uh, what War Machine deck do I want to play today? I haven't done that yet. The Black Knight stuff? I don't know I want to do Sauron stuff. That's a stack. I imported this the other day. I don't, know, I don't know what I don't remember what war kitty is. Past Jeff. Past Jeff imported a bunch of decks. Dude, let's do this, and if it's a disaster, we could do some black type. I don't always agree with you, Jeff, but I do respect your integrity. Don't often find people that don't flip flop on opinions. I'd actually like to take a second to dissect that because for what it's worth, I am willing to change my opinion on things somewhat regularly when new information presents itself. 
And I, and I actually think there's this really awful position where once you've brought up a position on something on the internet or in life in general, you're supposed to just like dig your heels in. One of the, and obviously this is, there are many examples of this, but there are many things that qualify as this, but one of the incredibly disqualifying statements for Donald Trump and being a reasonable human being is there's a quote from him at one point about how he's been one of the most consistent people throughout his whole life and he hasn't changed since he was a child. And it's just like, if you can't look back on the person you were five years ago, 10 years ago and say, man, that person was wrong about a number of things. I've grown, I've learned, I've changed. You probably aren't growing or improving as a person. Reasonable, good people, I would put forward, are almost always able to look back and be like, I'm better than what that was then. I've learned and I've grown. Hey, Sensei, thanks for the third of a year. Welcome back. And I, I'm sure there's a certain point where for people who are older than myself, or maybe that's not as as big as it, as big of that change as it is, but like teens to twenties to thirties, as a as a person, I can look back and be like, yeah, there were things there were things we did better. Sure, there's a difference between willing to change your opinion on new information and changing back and forth based on perception. But that's something that happens to politicians especially a lot where people are like, oh, a politician changed their position on something, you can't trust them. It's like, no, you should want politicians that are willing to change their positions based on new information. Should be a, that should be a, a feature, not a bug. It's like to give a to give a, a pointed example, um, there are definitely clips of uh, Biden and other Democrats who have since changed their positions on marriage equality from decades ago. And that those older positions often get brought up in bad faith in the current discussion where when in 2022, there were a bunch of Republicans and zero Democrats who voted against supporting a mar marriage equality. And it's like, well, they're different from 20 years ago. And that's a good thing that they're different now. But what we're, what we're talking about is today. Let's focus on the here and the now is what matters. We could draw a war machine. Sanctum doesn't bother us. That's a baby land shark. Sick of us crossbones gaming chat. Did you run down War Machine after playing him for a week? He's great. I think, I think War Machine is exactly the style of card you should be happy and comfortable spending resources on. He, uh, he is a tech card that's good against a number of cards, and he also adds, adds, uh, power level to other, other things like Black Knight. Stafford, the difference we build around a tech cards. Yeah, but War Machine's kind of both, right? He's both a tech card and a build around. That was the singular worst draw on our deck. I think we need to leave here. 
I think our deck's probably a bit more powerful than theirs look like a newer player, and we probably shouldn't gamble four cubes here in a game where our draw is super awkward. Retreat the is probably a waste of time. I don't think they ever retreat. Escape! Takes too much time at least. What about separating the art from the artist? I think there are so many phenomenal artists and pieces of art out there that I can fill my space and time consuming content from great artists who aren't pieces of shit that I can very easily skip on the ones created by people who are in fact horrible human beings. I think there's a... Uh, Plenty of room for a no ethical consumption under capitalism. You participate in a society, etc., etc. Why do you say you want to improve it? Snap. But I think that arts arts one of those things where Yeah, I don't do I don't do Harry Potter in my house. I grew up I grew up doing Harry Potter stuff. It was a big part of my childhood, but you know, she ended up being a billionaire billionaire bigot. There are plenty plenty of great wizard slash youth fantasy adjacent things that my family and kids can engage and enjoy. Jode, thank you for the 53 months. Welcome back. The dilemma arises when you look at a piece of art not knowing who the artist is and loving it. Are you horrible for loving the art? No, that's an unreasonable extrapolation of what I said to try and put me in some type of gotcha situation. And I'm, I'm also explicitly here not to yuck your yum. You do you and you know where your lines are and what you feel good, bad, or otherwise. But my my position is fairly simple and straightforward, like I just said. It's, I don't feel like I'm missing something in my life by skipping content from people who end up being shitty people. Because there's so much content in the world, I'm never going to be able to watch or consume all of it. This de this deck seems really bad when we don't draw War Machine. <laughs> Staying here is a little scary because our opponent could stamp us. They also could have armor for the right. A little, a little spooky. Oh, well, I guess I have Shang-Chi for the middle, so it probably doesn't matter. So good at drawing infinite out of the last turn, gamers. We can definitely lose this. Yeah, I also think that's true on Jumos. Sometimes the IP can grow on a personal on a personal basis. And I I also think JK Rowling is a particularly exceptional slash erroneous example of it in an extreme. Because for people that aren't familiar with her by example, she's been asked point blank how she feels slash sleeps at night with all the hate she puts out into the world. And her pointed response was very explicitly, she feels she's right in the things that she says because of the money that she has. And that's very common among wealthy people, right? Like they think they can do no wrong or do nothing because they have success. 
So the, in, in her case, there is a very direct, explicit, I feel like you're giving validation to my hate by putting money into my IP. Again, it's a conversation that has some nuance and there's shades of gray and stuff like that with her is different, is different than other, some other people. It's not a yes, no, right, wrong, etc. But her, her position there is one of the reasons why I would never, never go back to consuming her IP. Kitty, and then it's like Kitty Call, and then it's War Machine. They're definitely a good set of locations for them to be Spectrum Gaming on, huh? Oh, I was gonna say them filling the right is good for us, but something crawler. Spectrum the bar sinister, huh? Which makes sense. The Jesus fish, thank you for the 16 months. Welcome back. So, assume they Spectrum here. They gain 12 in the middle up to 23. It's actually not that much. And then how big would they be over here? Um, they would be at 24, 6, 30. No, 24, 27, 35. I could get... I can only get to 30 over here. Yeah, so we gotta go. Escaped. Each, each spectrum is eight, cap is three, and then six on cap. So it's 20, 24 plus three plus six. I guess that uh, 24 plus 3 plus 6 is 33, not 35. Sorry, Nate Crawler, someone's gotta do it. Speaking of billionaires, if you have Amazon Prime, send over some of that Bezos money with the Prime sub. Yep. Honestly, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Bezos at Amazon is one of those, you know, no ethical. And he's more a more clean example of the no ethical consumption under capitalism stuff, right? Like, as much as I dislike Amazon and its union busting practices and billionaires acquiring their money how they do, there's no arguing at the fact that, like, my job makes Amazon money and that my family has Amazon Prime because it's convenient and more cost-effective than other options that exist out there. 
And even, even if you're someone that doesn't shop on Amazon and you don't use Twitch, like most of the internet is hosted on AWS at this point. So even, even if you're explicitly seeking out other alternatives, you're still putting money back into Amazon on the back end. Honestly, even if we win this match, I don't know if we're going to play more with this deck. It seems real bad. We're having, we're having a real struggle into this Spectrum starter deck. <laughs> I think we're going to do something more powerful even if we win this one. Video media seems like it's near impossible, that sort of billionaire one way or another. Yeah, basically. Echo has a real text box in this matchup. Might be able to catch someone. Your Century Scarless worked better for me compared to the Werewolf Scarless. What do you think? Well, the Werewolf Scarless is bad and the Century Scarless is fine, so yes. What a hand, what a game. Just play the best, stop it. Unlucky, powered up their lizard. Is there ever a world where werewolf goes back to three? I, I think that I, I'm the wrong person to ask that because I take the werewolf nerf very fucking personally. I think, I think it's truly absurd that they gutted werewolf as hard as they did. It was after, after Nico Badaru, I think werewolf was the most interesting card to release in 2023. And I'm very salty that they took the card and destroyed it. All right, 20 wins the middle and Orko wins the left every time. Is Kitty even worth an error without the synergies of Angel and Help? No, K Kitty's always been a synergy card to be fair. Uh, you select your server at AFK actually at the very start, 3 deuce. When you're at the loading screen, there's dots in the top right hand corner that you pick. And if you already went in and made an account and you want to restart to make sure you're on the server with the rest of us, you go into your account settings, there's like a create new button under other, where you can jump to an account on a new server. It's really, it's actually really annoying how their server stuff is set up, considering you can't easily switch between them. Makes it very difficult to play with friends. Look at that Orca buff, chat. Uh, if you want to join the Hoaglandia AFKJ Guild, we're on server 103. 103. We also have an active channel in the Subs Discord server, or active thread under Gaming General. We're hanging out. We're gonna do, I think we're going to do... Yeah, you have to make a new account. If you're already spent money and you've played a bunch, it's probably not worth it. Hopefully they have the ability to do guilds across servers at some point. Their other AFK game does that, but the feature's not implemented great in Journey to Start. No, it's not a new account. It's a new character on a new on a new server. Technically the same account still. 
You have to you have to start fresh. You lose progress. That you have. Yeah, I'm gonna put this here because it's either gonna be hollow or alter death in either case I want the stats. We actually talked, I've talked about that a lot the last week, Wilker Wilker, and I think part of my personal dissatisfaction with Marvel staff recently is a bias based around the fact that all of the types of cards that I enjoy playing get nerfed incredibly quickly and incredibly hard, and the types of cards that I really don't enjoy get to remain powerful for what feels like fucking forever. Elsa, Kitty Pride, Werewolf by Night, even Loki. These were all effects I really enjoyed and they were nerfed to a point where they're not playable anymore. And like, Eliath, Shang-Chi, these are cards that I find frustrating that like months later, Beast, Hitmonkey, the list, the list of cards that I enjoyed that got nerfed to the point where they're not in top decks anymore is, uh, it's, it's fucking long, honestly. Professor X, yeah. It takes, a, it takes a long time for them to make changes to these effects. And while it's taking them a long time. Dodge a name where we can dodge a ball. Rats. And while it's taking them a long time, the other things I find obnoxious last a while. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then Stegra got an emergency OTA because they accidentally gave him an extra point of power. It's just like very, very funny in comparison. Yeah, honestly, I like Miss Marvel personally, but I think I agree that she's another example of cards enabling gameplay I don't care for getting to be powerful for a while. Like, Miss Marvel enabling Professor X stuff was strong for a good bit. And at least she's not enabling... I, I actually really like Miss Marvel as a card, which is why she, like, was at the top of my list of things I was thinking about here. So, we're kind of six in one hand, half dozen in the other here. If I, if I move... If I don't move Nightcrawler here, Mr. Fantastic plus their Nightcrawler beats me middle. But if I move my Nightcrawler, Spectrum beats me on the left. So I can't... I can't beat Mr. Fantastic and Spectrum here. However, I have no idea what they're doing, so we're good. Yeah, this was... This was an opponent who is very clearly just due to Marvel Snap. There's no collection level error by Marvel's matchmaking here. We're zero percent. We should have won this game. They should have just played Mr. Fantastic and Spectrum here. And I don't think we could ever win. So we won this match, but I'm gonna retire this deck because this deck is poop. <laughs> that that matchup should not have been that much of a struggle. All right, looks like it's time for some adverts. Uh, we'll see you in 120 seconds. We're gonna play something else for round two of Infinite Conquest when we get back. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. I think it's because people who like to play obnoxious cards like that are more likely to leave the game when they become weaker. So, I don't think it's about obnoxious cards so much as it's about cards that are easier to execute. All the cards that I enjoy playing that got hard nerfed out of relevance, things like Hitmonkey and Werewolf and Elsa and others, those are cards that require a lot of complex sequencing decisions, whereas things like Professor X and Eliath are very much easy buttons in comparison. What are you playing next? I need one more War Machine win, so probably Black Knight or Shuri. I need to do at least one more of these. All right, have some adverse. I'm gonna run to the bathroom really quick, so I'm Spear Beam.
ever been a prior season where they didn't release a dev video? No, there's always a dev video, but sometimes they don't release until Monday. There's definitely been seasons where the dev video didn't come out until the Monday before. War Machine Black Knight. Still the best performance by uh, in a solid sample here at Infinite Conquest. Love that one up. What's your Cinderella story of this month? A card that isn't publicly highly acclaimed but punches above its weight class. I don't know, a lot of people seem to be down on War Machine for some reason. Card's fine. This archetype has plenty of fine stats. Are there any War Machine plus Hope decks that CC right now? Yeah, the one we just loaded up. This one. Sorry for hands back, got me two infinite forms with two tries. Yeah, that deck's solid. It's a little weak into Thanos, but otherwise fine. What is what is it? says War Machine is good but not great and people are comparing him to Mockingbird and Hope which feels stronger. Chat, you gotta understand, for people that are competitively focused in Marvel Snap, for the last like year or so, there's only been two types of Marvel Snap card releases. Bad cards and cards that make Thanos better. And War Machine, War Machine doesn't make Thanos better currently, so... For the spiky competitive players, they're all gonna tell you the card's not good. I, I, we were actually talking about this in the subs Discord server, and I think this statement from chat highlights the fucking absurdity of the statement around War Machine. As I keep having people ask me if War Machine is better than Cannonball, and those two cards aren't even in the remotely same fucking universe of power level, in my opinion. Like, can Cannonball is not a good, playable, fantastic Marvel Snap card. It is like a replacement level Marvel Snap card. It is a replacement level Marvel Snap card where you sub Shang-Chi for it and it's a, it's a okay. Whereas War Machine is a card that makes a deck like this one both be more competitive and be a tech card against other things. Cannonball is a very playable Marvel Snap card. However, at the same time, if you take Cannonball and cut it from any deck and replace it with Shang-Chi, that deck is still going to operate at a similar amount of efficiency and be fine. Yeah, but it's just snapped on whatever game. Unlikely they have Carnage here, so I'm gonna go ahead and snap this armor. It's a little scary to snap Barb Sinister into destroy, but they also have infinite tickets to burn. Nailed it. Oh, gamers are just parroting KM best. That actually makes a lot of sense. That, that explains all the silly pushback on War Machine. Okay. Victory. That makes that makes a lot of sense.
again, I think, and this is, this is what it comes down to. I am not saying the Cannonball is a bad card. I am just saying any deck that has Cannonball can sub him for a different card and basically be the same deck still with the same power level, and that's not true for War Machine. If you take this deck that I'm currently playing and you sub War Machine for a different card, this deck is significantly worse. I also, this is, you want my cold shot shit. I think there are going to be a lot of people eating shit about their take on War Machine if they actually meaningfully address Thanos in the next week, full cope. Assured, assuredly they're finally going to do that, right? They're gonna take the kid gloves off. The kid glove, the kid gloves are gonna come off and they're gonna finally, they're gonna finally hit the Titan, right? I fully expect Thanos will be nerfed on both the 4th and the 9th. I don't I don't know that I expect them to actually do what needs to be done though. That's where that's where I'm at, gamers. I expect I expect I would be shocked if a nerf wasn't coming. I wouldn't be shocked if whatever they change doesn't do anything again. That's where I'm That's where I'm at. I see a post Thanos nerf meta forming up. I genuinely don't know the answer to that question. There are a lot of a lot of directions it can go. Gamer, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. Is there a patch tomorrow? There is not. OTA on Thursday, patch a week from tomorrow. There is a season rollover tomorrow, though, and it's releasing a new card that's good in Thanos, so, you know. Does Red Hulk sub for Giganto in this deck? I actually don't know the answer to that question. Unsure. I like this one's the game most of the time, yeah? Victory. They're probably the Odin the Odin Surfer deck, which honestly, I bet this deck's not good against the Odin Surfer deck. Which is maybe, maybe a reason to not play more of this. Slap, slap, boom. Thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Yeah, I feel like you'd be discarding an 11 power red all frequently with this deck. That would be my expectation. I think Goose is kind of silly in this archetype, Burgle. I don't think it actively solves problems that you have in armor solid. Or snapping me. Uh, I think London's better for them than us. I'm gonna leave. Escape. I stopped playing this deck because Surfer Odin kept putting me in a trash can and it was popping up more. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Surfer Odin deck has become relevant because there aren't a lot of people playing tech cards right now. And without, without tech cards, this is a really hard deck to beat. Burned 
what we knew to be true. I tried Surfer Odin and ate crap to Lockdown Destroy. I think your Destroy matchup's okay. Your Lockdown matchup is definitely not good. Now, I have Black Knight. So, if we hit a... If we hit a Fatty Boom here... That could be good for us. He'd hit, he'd hit it next turn, though. You could sub Giganto for Magneto to help this matchup. Yeah, that makes sense. What are my predictions for White Widow? I don't know. She's a tough card to crack. I think I'm actually just vibing. I think I'm vibing. Play out hope. Why? Not playing cards out is better against Sazmet. It's cool. Apologies for the jump scare. My anyway, I, I just said we had to trust Lady Sif chat. Okay. So if they Odin, they go to 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then I get minus two. And then over here, or sorry, I get minus four. No, minus two. Over here, I get minus two. And then they get plus 12. So this, so this is a winner. I should have snapped. I should have played the blade and snapped them before this happened. That was awful Victory. on my part. Just a point of cube equity. One more, one more point out of them here. Do we play around Eliath? How do I play around Eliath? What what game actions would I have taken to play around? Would I have played around Eliath? What does that look like? No, you should not play around Goliath in the output range of this deck we are currently playing against. That would be an incredible mistake. At this point, playing around Goliath is just going to play an AFK journey. <laughs> you're not wrong. Uh, you're not wrong.
some guys. That was a good solid hit. Just done this on one with the Gigantor already teed up. flip here if they don't limbo, but... And hazmat right. I go down to 17 in the middle, and they go down to two, and then they go up to 10. sequences that beat 20 in the center if they mystique surfer yeah that's a good call mystique surfer would let them put 4x here so that would add 16 up to 22 no it's only 18 right it's only uh yeah it's only 20 Mystique Surfer is 20. Right? Four times four. Hell, can you understand me? really need to move the blade either way because if they put this over here they're only going to 22. Victory. Yeah War Machine I didn't put on unlocked. Hey congrats Quinzit. Thanks for the 14 months. like I want to change next again. I get I guess we stuck past that one. Yeah. 
Who's my favorite artist in staff? I think Justina is probably my favorite. With uh, Kim being a close second. You played High Evo with Hope in it. Yeah, it's just not a very exciting deck. High Evo, High Evo tends to be... I don't usually get, lean towards decks that only play a single card in the last turn of the game. Jeff, I got 700 variant gold complete, and I'm struggling on how to not open cash until I have a new variant to pull for. Well, I mean, if you just keep opening them, eventually you'll be, you'll be avatar complete too. Do you think the game is getting harder? I reached rank 100 and landed at rank 31k a few months ago. It was rank 128k. I mean, I don't think the game's getting harder. I think there's just less people playing at the moment. I would be, I would be anecdotally, obviously, I only, I only have anecdotes, but I would be shocked if the rate people are playing at the top is the same. It wasn't what it was a little bit ago. Generally, generally speaking. When, I'm a, when we're a day out from the season resetting, my 8,500 snap points or so is usually closer to rank 1,000, and we're still top 500. So I don't, I don't play a lot of the latter post-infinite, and anecdotally, my rank this season has not been decaying from people climbing past me at the same rate it has in past seasons. Speaking of things decaying, Chad, try not to decay too much while these adverbs run. We'll be back with round four of Infinite Conquest in a little bit. Once I figure out what deck I want to play. Thanks for hanging out. Hell Drag, thanks for up in that prime for the 29 months. And Depo, thanks for hanging out. Welcome back. Honestly, with how linear everybody else has been, I might just play Odin Surfer ourselves. Mm, we could do this. This deck felt pretty... Actually, this is probably a fun choice if people are playing this stupid Surfer deck. Because we have our own, we have our own Luke Cage in this. This is a Cosmo deck, too. Yeah, let's play, let's play with this. What's the negative surfer? It's just some random pile of cards from untapped. It's probably bad. Jeff, think of their sand castles. Yep. Somebody please think of the sand castles. Surfer player that was playing Shag. What is Shag's play rate inside a conquest, actually? Before we dive in here, I should really answer that question. Chat! Shag only has a 44.7% popularity rate. And Eliath is only 26.6. Come on now, it's fine. It's no big deal. Brokelet, thank you for the six months. Welcome back. <sighs> oh my god, I didn't notice the 60% win rate. Holy fuck. And this, this doesn't remove mirror matches, by the way. So there are games recorded in here where Shag was on both sides. <laughs> Oh, man. 
Silver Shard, thanks for the third of a year. Welcome back. Sensei Zeus, thank you for the 11 months. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for the Baker's Dozen. Yeah, Luke, Luke's definitely our best draw next turn to uh, help on the left. Oh, they couldn't fill the right. Well, that's incredible. Holy gamers! I think I keep him modest in the middle. Let me put some points on the right. I think this is I think, I think the plus four on the left is a surprise. Could. Could get us across the finish line. Yes, sir. Be some Luke Cage. Yeah, he seems really good in this metagame. I snap on that, yeah? Could space stone, sure. They're just in case they have a space stone. Pretty good. My 410 better. Where am I better off putting her? We're beating Jeff over here. Is it just in the center every time? I think it's just the center every time, yeah? Oh, yeah, they could call him City on the left, is a good call. I can't call him City in middle, they don't have extra energy.
The space throne was karma for not turning off the TV. Yeah, yeah basically. Oh, I, uh, I had a hellfire. It's definitely this one, yeah? I hit a, I hit a hellfire variant over the weekend, so we unlocked that. We need six more to get her variant, but I think we go for the border on that avatar, given the shot. Ah, uh, that spectrum was a bundle spectrum from over the weekend or last week. Going on, Sunset Bleach. Thank you for the almost three years of support. Welcome back. Remember, the last round of Infinite Conquest always pairs you to someone else who's also 4-0. Sometimes it can take a little bit. Looks like we got one. Thanos for the finals here. Sarah, though. That's not the armor I wanted for Christmas. Only the last round pairs the same record. So the other rounds attempt to pair you with the same record, but they expand that requirement fairly rapidly. They expand that requirement fairly rapidly. Yeah, it looks like probably Living Tribunal. Anyone explore the idea of Supergiant plus the Tuma or is 410 not big enough anymore? It's mostly that, um... Uh, it's mostly the fact that, uh... It's not that that's not big enough so much as uh, Eliath is a card. Surfer deck. Could be Surfer, could also be Living Tribunal. Like, Living Tribunal is more likely with the Sarah. Yeah, I, would, I would estimate Negative Tribunal. Could also be a more traditional Negative Brew, but I would, I would assume Tribunal until proven otherwise. Living Tribunal is the, uh, the most established common version of their archetype. Eliath and the Supergiant is rough without priority. It's rough with priority too, givers. The priority, the priority aspect of it largely doesn't matter. If we can hit Annihilus here, we could end up in a fine spot. Blue Marvel isn't usual in Living Tribunal. It is in the Mr. Negative build of it. Behold my mighty hand. Yeah, I need, I need an Annihilus that turn. Sad. Escaped. I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to eke past this like we've eked past some of the other ones, but this just like yet again feels like we hit a matchup that's just like incredibly polarized in the opponent's favor. And that's just 
kind of been the whole story of playing games today. It's just almost almost every round we've played, I've changed decks and we've run into a polarized matchup, which is a testament to that, like, you probably just shouldn't be changing decks, but it still doesn't feel particularly good. Yeah, any, any kicking void over is one of our best shots for sure. But we are, our deck is devoid of meaningful interaction in this matchup. So it's probably, probably not one we can win. Our somewhat saving grace is that their deck is rather inconsistent. So that could potentially work out in our favor. But if they if they snap and retreat well, this matchup should be pretty impossible for us. Still no Caesar reveal video. I mean, I assume if it didn't release over the weekend, it's not releasing until this afternoon. I'd expect it in 20 minutes at the absolute earliest, but probably not for like two hours and 20 minutes or so. Thanks for the 14 month stock. Your deck could play Enchantress. I mean, what am I supposed to cut from my deck for Enchantress, dear Twitch chatter? Please, please enlighten me about which cards you think I'm supposed to cut for my deck for Enchantress. Tell me, tell me more. Does she have a car? Yeah, like zero, zero's like the one cup, but even that one's valuable for playing on curve and other matchups. You could Cosmo. Cosmo makes Sentry worse. And also, it's peak Twitch chat to talk about I should cut Cosmo for Enchantress in this matchup, but we were talking about Cosmo being good earlier in the other matchup. Twitch chat. Twitch chat always wants to sideboard for whatever matchup we're currently playing. Like what card? What card would be good against what we're currently playing against you? Okay, I want more. I want more of that one. It's almost like polarizing matchups exist and it's impossible to take into all of them. Yep. A tuba! say second dinner definitely knows what they're doing only having infinite conquest open the last week of the season because if this was a format i could play on demand all of the time i i don't think i'd still be playing marvel snap this game mode this game mode is such a terrible marvel snap game mode deeply deeply negative gameplay experience tickets for normal players was not all the time you would have anybody to pair into. Yeah, it's true to a degree. Yes, allowing you to go five and one would go a long way towards making it feel less atrocious. I agree with that. So, it's not just the feeling of helplessness in polarized matchups. The thing that sucks about Conquest is also the feeling of I've wasted all my time playing. No, I just, I completely disagree about the infinite ladder. The, the conquest as a whole loses the fast, punchy, I can retreat bad matchup style gameplay. And then infinite conquest compounds on top of that where I'm locked in a bad matchup with an opponent now. And I'm not just losing this matchup. I'm also losing the last hour plus of my life that I spent to get here because I flipped tails on my matchup in the final round. 
And not only did I flip tails, but I'm also failing to like draw an Ilus in the top however many cards in my deck constantly here. Trishes. their magic. Honestly, that's not a terrible idea. They probably do it here so they keep the super flow energy, yeah? Yes. Yeah, it's our best chance to get some cubes here. They could be magicking right as well. Yeah, that's true. It's just this. I'm gonna play for all of it because I think this matchup's atrocious for us. I don't think we can win, so. The mystery intrigues me. Like, the worse a matchup is for you, the more risks you're supposed to take. This is an appropriate risk, I think. We might still die here, Jet. I am. Everybody, everybody gloating, we're probably still dead. So I really, I really can't emphasize enough that's how fucking man. terrible and polarized not in our favor this matchup is. Like it's, it's, it's tough to put into words how unlikely we are to win a game even, much less an entire set of conquests. And this is, this is why, Chat, this is why, if your goal is to do well in Conquest, you should just be playing Thanos, because Thanos does not have any bad or polarizing matchups. Like, there's, there is a reason why, there is a reason why this deck is even better in Conquest than it is on the Ranked Ladder. Like, you look at, and uh, holy fuck, that's a difference. I actually wasn't expecting it to even be that much. It is 10 win percentage better. 10 points better. Conquest versus not. And that's not just because, like, it's it's still the best deck in ranked. Like, don't get me wrong. Still the best deck in ranked. But unlike most of these other decks that are closer to it on the ranked ladder, in Conquest, all of these other decks that are close to it have polarized matchups where they just lose to particular tech cards, which takes their win rate and pulls it down significantly. That's also true. The play, the play rate's much lower here as well. Have some ads. I'm going to take a walk after that. And we'll, uh, we'll return to slamming our hand in this car door with four more infinite tickets when I return. Thanks for hanging out.
If you think you're someone who's gonna be a Zemo enjoyer, I hope you have Mockingbird, because I assume most Zemo decks are gonna be Mockingbird decks. Stats for Infinite Conquest do not remove mirror matches that had these cards played on both sides. Your sand castles are not safe. Your sand castle, two words. thoughts on a draft mode like Magic the Gathering being added to Snap. I think it is incredibly unlikely that Marvel Snap ever adds a limited mode. I think it's a mode that in other games proves difficult to monetize and often not particularly popular. I also think the core concept of a draft runs counter to Marvel Snap's collection and green mechanics. are one of those things that a vocal minority always asks for and then ultimately they don't they don't really get used a lot when push comes to shove. So when I talk about draft mode being counter to second dinner's collection model, I'm not just talking about it giving you cards. Draft runs counter to Second Dinner's collection model because it gives players a way to play Marvel Snap where they are encouraged Win not to care about the contents of their Snap collection. That's the that's the fundamental problem with it. It's not it's not that they would give you cards to collect. It's that it's a mode where Escape. you get to play and then not care about your cards, which in turn encourages people not to care about their collection level, which in turn encourages people not to care about upgrading their cards or variants or other things of that nature. What are your thoughts on Uatu in this deck? I play him in Cerebro 2 and he's not bad. I think your definition of not bad is very different from my definition of not bad. Draft mode gain traction 
if it had rewards like Infinite Conquest, attaching tangible, meaningful prizes to a game mode people aren't actually interested in playing is one of the singular worst things you can do in a game like Marvel Snap. You do not want your players to feel compelled to play game modes that they don't have fun in to collect rewards because obligating your players to play game modes that they don't enjoy doesn't cause them to play them long term. It causes them to just say, this is too much. I'm not having fun. I'm going to go play something else. So one of, one of the reasons... Yeah, I mean, and this is, this Infinite Conquest is honestly exactly, it's exactly my point, chat. There aren't even that meaningful of rewards here inside of Infinite Conquest. And even I, someone who plays Marvel Snap more for fun than most, feel fucking compelled to use these tickets. And easily, not close, the most miserable I am playing Marvel Snap week in and week out is 100% inside of this game mode because I don't play it for fun. I play it because I feel compelled to use a resource. If I, if I didn't have infinite tickets that made me feel like I was spewing not to use them, I would never touch this game mode. It fucking sucks. It makes me hate playing the game. And maybe I just need to work on getting past that mental hurdle and just learn to not play it because I hate it. But 100, 100%, if I didn't have infinite tickets and I would feel like I'm spewing going unspent, like, and just like, yeah. And to a, to a small degree, I do manage to do that in some seasons because you will see me play, you will see me concede tickets at the end of each season. In fact, there's a good chance after, after we do this. You specifically hate infinite or all of conquest. Seems you have fun messing around in the proving grounds. I mean, the proving grounds isn't real conquest is like the TLDR. For lack, for lack of a better terms, the proving grounds is not real conquest. I'm probably supposed to leave here. There, they have, they have enchantress. I should just leave. They're playing, they're playing Quake as well. Escaped. In fact, I'm just gonna restart this ticket because playing against an enchantress deck with my cerebro deck sounds not fun in this match one anyways I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire off the next one and see if we can get a matchup that's less polarized against us but this is again just not I don't, I don't really want to play out all these tickets anyways This is a fun marble snap. The opposite it this is the wrong word there, yeah. Do you think sideboards would make it better? I think literally anything other than what conquest currently is would make it better i think sideboards i think multi-deck i think literally an ounce of player agency so you're not just locked into an unwinnable matchup feeling like you wasted your entire time
Thanks for hanging out, Tekius. Appreciate it. Not my mystique! Not my mystique! I do this, I'm a dressery, bro. for them. I think it's this, yeah? Next turn, we can blue marvel into these two. I think it now it's this, and then next turn we go Mystique, Shadow King here, move the Nightcrawler over, and we play for here and here. Does a Modoc here get us? If they full pass, they go to 21 and then 25. I lose to Modoc full pass. That seems unlikely, right? I am 
By one. No, wait, they already soaked? Okay. Victory. They already soaked. Funny, haha! Every streamer is quitting streaming because it's April Funny Day, haha! I'd like to reflect that I at least committed to my bit and played a non-Marvel Snap game for an hour to start the stream today. <laughs> funny, funny day, ha ah. Everybody's quitting job, doing something else. Please, please laugh. Yeah, we, dra we drafted in AFK Journey for the first hour of the stream today. Honestly, I might do it for the first hour tomorrow too because I really like their draft mode and Marvel Snap needs a balance patch. <laughs> B7 three the second draft. Thank you very much. I only completely flubbed one of them. In theory, that could have text on the last turn of the game. Think your numbers do better if you start early with a different game and then move to snap or end the stream with a different game after starting snap. Uh, I think my viewer metrics tend to be better if I start with a different game. Is the the first hour or so of the stream tends to be a slow build up anyways. So if it's slightly slower because I'm streaming a variety game, it's like not as big of a deal. Whereas like if I switch to a different game at the end of the stream, the viewer count pitches itself off a cliff. When you're uh, when you're a primarily one game streamer, typically you'll have somewhere between like 25 and 40% of your primary game viewership when you do a secondary game. Largely, largely been my experience. I could save this one as a surprise for later. Because the format's smiling on us now. Today's been a dumpster fire, just like Friday and Wednesday. And to be fair, I'm not even sure that so much the format is just as Infinite Conquest is just kind of not great. Yeah, I'm snapping here, and it might just be like move Nightcrawler Storm, honestly. Um, it's annoying that I can't play for all three while rug pulling because of the Monster Metropolis. Snap. I might today. I'm all right. Tactical Rangers, thanks for the seven months. Uh, weird negative destroy build. Uh, last time we played negative destroy, it had Killmonger in it. So it's something to think about while we play these games. Nightcrawler, Storm, Brood, Left. That doesn't end the game a turn early. Was 
the, the goal there. I might snap if this location isn't terrible for us. Extra stream bro sounds lovely. Did we do egg guns with the children this weekend? We did. Normal. Boys, the boys picked up eggs too, but they're they're big and not remotely as into it. Slayer, I think that counts as a relatively neutral location for us. So we go ahead and step oh, snap. on the old little cerebro copy. Whatever snap is lousy, cerebro two cheers me up. I agree. This is my. This is, this deck has been my, this game is frustrating. I need to do something else comfort pick for the last month or so. What did you put in the eggs? I didn't put anything in the eggs chat. The Easter Bunny had, had plenty of chocolate though. God bless the rabbit. Emma says, thank you for the 52 months. Welcome back. Are we doing viewer decks today? I don't think so. Usually, usually when viewer decks are going on, or when, usually when Marvel Snap feels tough, playing viewer decks is a way to make it feel tougher, not less tough. Does the opponent cook in? Just some kind of Mr. Negative deck. I'm supposed to move Kurt to play around, uh. Wakanda forever! Get fucked, Buttercup. It's almost a shame that that happened, because we would have been able to shadow kick it otherwise and get him. One's on me. I needed to echo the left. Needed to echo the left. Perfect. Perfect negative draw for them. Oh, snap. I really don't like gamers. Heck, whenever someone responds to my opponent playing stock negative with something like cooking, like I get that their deck's not good, but like is my, maybe, maybe the youth can help me out. Is my understanding of how cooking is supposed to be used in games like this just not accurate? Like my understanding of the word cooking is supposed to be implied that you're like working outside the box, right? Like you're doing something neat and innovative. That's, that's a very common thing where people are like, opponent playing stock deck. Oh, they're cooking because they beat you. It's like, it doesn't mean they beat me. It's supposed to mean they're doing something interesting and off meta. Supposed to be doing something novel and innovative. In innovative is the word. Their deck is off meta. And maybe, maybe that's the misunderstanding. Maybe for a lot of people, it's just supposed to be an off meta which I think is a fine way to do it, but that wasn't my understanding of what that's supposed to be. Perfect. 
Modern dictionary defines cooking as using a situation where something's doing cr something crazy and achieving something big. Yeah, that's usually not how it's used in the gaming context. That's not how I typically see a kit used. I think with Goose on the left, we should be good to go here, yeah? I'm glad, I'm glad we had this engagement. Been stuck at 88 since 99. What's the best way to wake up and grind down 16 cubes? I don't know. Electro, it's not the last turn, gamers. The answer is always Thanos. Yeah, that's true. Accurate, accurate. I shouldn't have thrown away four cubes in the last game, champ. Missed playing Echo on the left. Embarrassing. Uh, Lazarus, you'd asked earlier, do you think the devs might add a feature to skip the animations at the end of a match? I mean, that's definitely feedback they've heard a bunch of. Thoughts on the next spotlights? I actually haven't looked at the upcoming spotlights. I'm waiting for the official announcement because they've been changing them so frequently. Victory. Your echo could have been destroyed. Sure, but I was 75% to win if I play the game appropriately and I didn't play the game appropriately. So you're right. It's not a 100% thing, but it was a lot better than the 0% with the line that I took. to goose to try and lock out a lane that they they try and keep empty I think no accelerate here means that I do this oh, I'm doing this right I think that no accelerate means I snap apologies Next card plus two power, so I can um I can Nico and then Mystique copy the Cerebro. supposed to eat Echo or am I supposed to eat Shadow King? So I, I need to pull for Storm next turn.
guess we'll eat Echo. I don't know, Chad, it's a coin flip either way. Wakanda forever! Hey look, we won the coin flip. They must have drawn um They must have hit Artem Zola and uh or negative Artem Zola, right? I guess a combination of like that and negative Iron Man could get me this turn. But I'm gonna play for all of it here. I think this is fine. We might be rug pulling ourselves, but let it rip. Snap into the forever long tank. Wind, aid my hand. <laughs> Victory. said chat most people taking forever aren't ghosting people just take forever people just no they're not even wiping people just take forever in conquest because there's literally no punishment for taking forever in conquest. Nothing, nothing about this mode penalizes you for taking the timer and burning it all the way down. Copy Blue Marvel, so it just gives me more stats across the board. Go for all three. Chat, I'm not sure. I'm not a boomer. I understand what the reference to wiping is. I am just pushing back on the fact that our opponent is likely taking a long time because they're doing something else. The reality is they're taking a long time because they're allowed to take a long time. Super Scroll is punishing for copying the Blue Marvel. I wasn't thinking about that. Well, we're super dead. Double up goose. Yeah, baby. Maybe that was better. Lock him out left and right. I think it's 
it's unlikely they're living tribunal. I have to get rid of this. Spray gold, thank you for the half a year. Welcome back. Wind aid my hand. Malls, thanks for the 15 months. Have you played much of the bounce deck you put in a recent video? I don't remember what bounce deck I put in a recent video. Echo on the right, Brood on the left. I think I want to be able to potentially put more stats into here. How does Goose work with Inverted, Null, and Iron Man? It, it uh, does not stop them. Goose cares about the current cost of the card. <laughs> Echo. Echo is so lovely. Echo slaps. That she does. They're dead now. Yeah, I think so. I think we have successfully booped them out of the game. Victory. All right, gamers, we'll be back for round three of Infinite Conquest with Cerebro 2 after these couple minutes of adverts. We'll see you in 120 seconds. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, our deck definitely had good tools to keep up with them there. Someone asked if there's balance coming soon. OTA on Thursday. Theoretically, Baron Zemo and Red Hulk tomorrow.
Is there a balance coming soon? Probably not, but there is an OTA. Oof. Are we excited for Zemo? Uh, if it really says a 3-5, it's probably fine. Is worth me getting one of the cards today or just wait? I don't understand your question. Are you saying should you open for War Machine? I'm gonna need all three cards. I mean, g genuinely, I think any week. I think any week that you're missing all of the cards is a great week to uh, spend your resources. You can, if you can spend four spot like he's a guaranteed get three cards. I think that's great. Yeah, there's a, there's a link for AFK Crit City. And if you like Hoaglandia and end up sticking with it, make sure you start on server 103 when you log in, because we have a Hoaglandia guild. Might be wrong to play for here, but I feel like I can't give it to him for free. Stonski, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Appreciate it. Unless there's, unless there's an upcoming card that you're like really looking forward to that you won't have the keys to get if you spend now, I think any time you can spend four keys to get three cards guaranteed is a phenomenal use of resources. Uh, the opponent is very likely someone who's low collection level chip. Nico into Electro is more. Oh yeah, that's a good call. Good, good shout out, you're correct. Normally 
might snap here, but there's a chance their cable took by Cerebro, so I think we gotta chill for now. Just dropping by! Thanks for dropping by to drop that Prime sub off. Appreciate that direct support. subs in the AFK guild or is anybody like I'm just taking anybody that applies for now if we get to a point where we have 30 and there's subs looking to get into it that haven't I'll probably give preference to subs but I'm not sure we'll fill 30 yeah I, I think they're a pull to that Nick sure what we're playing into The guild's work of the game, and what's the game put like? It's a hero collector single player story game that also has a draft mode. We played the draft mode for an hour on the stream to start this morning. And the guilds have some things like there's like a monster thing that you push through to fight together that everybody contributes to over the course of a week. Okay, they took my Mystique, which means my Cerebro is still in my deck. That's good to know. Uh, if we peel that, we're one in three to peel that. We have a shot here. In Cerebro 2, I feel like there are too many modes that make her unplayable for only a couple benefits. Mostly because fuck your feelings. If you sit down and actually count how many modes are good on Cere on Nico and Cerebro 2, the answer is five out of seven are good. So it's one of those questions I feel like I have to answer way too much for how good this card is in the deck. And then past, past her two modes that are bad, like just having a one energy card to fit into your curve is frequently good as well. She's like gen genuinely very good. She's one of the cards that took this deck and pushed it up considerably in power level. What modes are bad beside multiply? Turn into a demon. Yeah, the plus the plus two mode is also good for Cerebro Prepper. Doubler, double herself and demon are the only ones that are like straight dead, and even those you use in some beach spots. Being able to draw Cerebro more consistently is frequently good too. let this happen and empty my hand. It's kind of an interesting proposition.
want to do. I got to get my hand up to you so I can beat a dino. I guess their collector is going to get huge though too. I have Unfortunate that they hit my two drops so I can't sift with the two drop this turn. Yeah, Collector's worked with Bitescape for the last few patches. Alright, Cerebro Brood Mystique. Okoye. Brood Cerebro Mystique are the relevant ones here. Oh my god. The f is happening? If they draw Devil Dino, it's 11, would put them to 17 here. Opponent snapped. I don't think I risk the one in. I don't think I risk the one in five they drew Devil Dinosaur here. I think, I, I think I'm supposed to leave. Ugh. Gives me 14 bit up to 23. This is this just like loses to a lot of their non-dino cards is the problem. Yeah, they have an actual M no, it's an Agent 13 Baku. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's I think I think they're very clearly a lower collection level gamer with a little bit less experience. I don't think there's any reason to give up three extra cubes here to a flip. I think we're gonna be in a better position in future games. There's no there's no reason to take a gamble here. It's just bad play. If you think you're favored in a matchup that you're playing overall, you should take fewer risks, not more. actually really sad 2x mode would have been insane there after all of the gamers were putting her down about it I still believe in heroes I actually think the complaint about cerebro not being good into locations is really overblown and shows a misunderstanding people tend to have about how often they lose to locations with other decks. With a Cerebro deck, it's just easier for you to identify when you've lost to a location. So like when you're a worse player, maybe you're bad at identifying when the locations beat you in the other games. But really, truly, like, Monster Island is like the one you can't interact with that's like kind of the worst for you. And even, even that one is like not that big of a deal because you could either one retreat or two win with Blue Marvel.
if it's it's purely a psychological thing if you just like can't handle the psychology of it like that's fine that's personal there's nothing wrong with just being like i don't enjoy the psychological aspect of it but the idea that there are like structurally more locations that hurt this deck than every other deck is just like really doesn't work out on the wash like are there more locations that hurt this deck than something like thanos that is like reality stone sure but like between Storm and Nico, you have a lot of control over your own destiny. Yeah, I think I think it's a psychological aspect more than anything. All right, forty percent to have a banger draw next turn. Gives me three, four, five, six. It ties the middle. And it puts me to 12 on the right. I think that's enough to stay. I don't want to be three to six. Let's make this the game. I guess I could win three in a row if we run it off on the way back, but I, don't know, I think this beats a lot of their singular six drops. Yeah, they can't devil dino anywhere, chat. This is big house, this is echoed, this is deep space. Thanks for the resubs in there, by the way. Lighthawk, I appreciate the 12 months. And Grafield, thank you for the, the half a year. Thanos this morning. All the sweaty people must have burned their infinite tickets already. Against the average squirrel girl deck, I think it's actually better to murder a squirrel than it is to murder the girl proper. Make their mockingbirds and their patriots worse. despite drawing here because this last location could be bad for us. I need to, I need to storm here. So if this is bad for us, we're in a not great spot. That's fantastic. Um... Now, 
Apple App here. We've got Shadow King for their brood and Echo for their ongoings. Wind aid my hand. Almost assuredly an Eliath deck here is something we'll need to be thinking about. Just goose me out when you go over it. Yeah, she's done that for a long time. They blue Marvel here. It gives them three, four, five, six up to twelve, and I'm gonna be at fourteen on each side. Yeah. Pucker up, Buttercup. Nice purple fart. Uh, some casserole. That sounds way more delicious than getting farted on. Go hack. Thank you for the seventeen months. Welcome back. Get it. Victory. Says Goots is a wonderful Marvel Snap Card Gamers. Truly, truly, and entirely. Thank you, Goose. Thank you, Goose. Interesting turn to puzzle on if they don't raise the stakes, but absolutely 0% chance we stay into turn 5 Eliath with a snap. But I should have snapped the turn Monster Island flipped up for us to maybe think about staying, and honestly, we probably still just end up leaving for one. Like, this is, this is the type of games, one of the issues people have with decks like this, I feel like people think they're supposed to be competitive in every single game of Marvel Snap that they play. 
and it's just like, well, that's basically never happening with any deck. And with Cerebro, you could just be like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna lose this Monster Island game. There's no Blue Marvel in sight. Other things lined up well for them, like Titan. It's fine to just go next for one cube. Any one or two, please. Breaking news. Hand's pretty good, and these locations aren't terrible for me. I'm gonna stay. <laughs> what a bag of dicks. All right, um, the good news is I can play Mockingbird now. Let's look at this, let's look at this glass half full. Is, do they have their Patriot or their Surfer? They do have their Patriot. Okay. Yeah, it's only 16 to 16, and then we assuredly lose the breaker. I assume they're staying. It's probably a waste of time to retreat later. That is a, that is a District X mystique there. That was my, my chortle at their turn five play. Escaped. But we're still up one. I got a few more to go. No big deal. People liking my tweet reminded me of this. We haven't talked about this on stream today. So I posted a video over the weekend of our Infinite Conquest win with the Odin Wong Hazmat deck. And I kid you not, so far there have been three different people that left me a comment on that video letting me know that they deserved credit and it was their deck that I was playing. Which is just like very, very funny. Why is that even a thing? It's a thing because deck ownership is this very silly concept people constantly hammer. You like the She-Hulk bundle for small spenders? Nope. Dude, like we were talking about that a little bit in the Discord the other day. Like, I'm not even sure 
that Thanos when changing really... I think if they completely balance Thanos, I'm not 100% sure that it even makes me feel good about the format. Like there's, I think there's a real chance that it's still just like, you know... I'm not, I'm not sure that's the reason the format is, is in a tough spot for me personally. I think it definitely has more to do with uh, Shang and Eliath than anything else. But if I do this and we kick the Electra into the center next turn. Or kick the Electra into the right next turn, I mean. Do you like the She-Hulk bundle for people who really want She-Hulk boosters? Asking the real questions. Drug Cerebro today. Escaped. Ah, uh, my lot's a little over a quarter acre token. It's a decent, decent size for sure. Mowing season this weekend, gamers. The grass is the grass is incredibly green for March. They're talking about it being greener on the other side. They're talking about my lawn. solid but we need to find a copy of storm for dc which means we also need this not to be negative for us they building an office by me they're building houses in the in the row directly behind me Is that the mythical grass you keep suggesting we touch? It is, in fact. I guess I could punt DC. I'm gonna like Cerebro Mystique there and then like Blue Marvel Center and then flood the board in the last turn. It's not great against Eliot though. blue marvel on six angle so i could jockey for priority i think is the plan
I just really want to draw one drop next turn. I guess I'm still 50% to draw one drop. We're a little over 50. We're going to draw. My pretty of it feel bad about it. I did successfully grab priority despite the Mockingbird. I think this wins it most of the time, yeah? Puts me up to 21 here. Shots to take their last two now. Victory. There are other deck archetypes not in stamp already. I don't know that deck archetypes necessarily super cleanly translate to stamp. dangerous one to make that a profitable thing to be doing. It's a type of effect that gets miserable pretty quickly. Please rank Hope, Summers, Mockingbird, and Call Obsidian. Uh, probably in that order you just listed. that explicitly so the reason why mill stuff is unplayable and bad in marvel snap is because there's no payoff for when you do mill someone yeah like there's been plenty of people that have tried to make that style of strategy work and it like gets rid of their deck the problem is by the time you get rid of their deck it's usually turn five or six already and then you don't get any benefit because your opponent still drew plenty of cards to play out sorry mill for the non-card gamers refers to destroying your opponent's deck yeah, I need maybe some kind of reverse Dark Hawk could be okay, where it gets bigger the smaller your opponent's deck is. That could maybe be a payoff that's like not too offensive for that style of deck. See, you could see that. So we'll stay, obviously, but hoping to end on an ongoing effect.
more shots for two more cubes. doesn't really have text to this matchup, so I think it's definitely the one we want to uh, throw on in here. Their last card, probably Silver Surfer. What card is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thanos gets the new card day. The people talking about having a struggle this season, I would just like to offer you that if you are someone who enjoys playing off meta decks, this is probably one of the toughest seasons we've had in a long time or potentially ever. Marvel here should ensure that we have priority going into the last turn. Uh, new patch is a week from tomorrow. Surfer confirmed to be their last card. Uh, this means we're beating Dr. Doob here. game too much to keep retreating. <laughs> what, a, what a weird way to phrase that. It, I don't enjoy the mechanics so I don't retreat is one thing. But I like the game too much to set. Maybe I like seeing the game play out too much to retreat. That's a fair, a fair way to position it. But retreating is definitely a core part of the game. Yo, it's a core part of this stream chat, these adverts. We'll see you in 120 seconds. We'll see if Cerebro 2 can close this out. Catch you on the flip side. Sure, but like, your, your phrasing of your original way retro frames it as people who retreat don't like the game. I guess is the... The, the appropriate the, the appropriate way like your your phrasing your initial phrasing comes with the implication that people retreating don't like the game I guess would be my my pushback on how you how you offered up your initial initial comment there this red dot keeps coming back 
game. Let's stand up for the last go-round, huh? Breezy, thank you for the 16 months. Welcome back. Okay, we'll see. I will start queuing this before the ads finish, but sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's not. This deck has 12 cards in it. It's probably our storm target. We'll see what the last location is. for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Appreciate it. There's a war machine in our future here, gamers. Even without war machine, Ghost Rider is pretty scary. Electra and Italian. I never had a window to Electra the Black Knight. They did both on four. This matchup with War Machine is probably impossible for us. This classic Marvel snap, two different runs, two different polarized matchups in match five.
I'm tired of feeling sad. I'm done playing Conquest. Yeah, Ghost Rider, you got Ghost Rider, giddy up. Yes, I could have Giganto too. Or statistically dead here. I'm just very, very overplaying this format. Conquest feels like if you're not playing the safest deck, you're not doing it right. Yeah, it's an accurate representation of the format. Technically, this is a slightly better tiebreaker. play Conquest, the less I like it. Yeah, I think that's an accurate representation of Infinite Conquest, especially. Like, I think if you're not a I enjoy playing the best deck full of tech cards, you're not going to enjoy this format, typically speaking. Especially not Infinite Conquest. I think the, I think the absolute best way to highlight the psychological portion of Conquest is that truly, truly is terrible. Um, is this is this is the best, the best way to do it here? Uh, pull up a stand. Let me just forfeit these really quick so I don't accidentally talk myself into playing them again. This is not fun at all. Yeah, it's taking a year to load. Ba basically, the thing. The thing I wanna I wanna highlight for for today is that we went eight and three. I won I won seventy three percent of the conquest infinite conquest matches I played today, and it was a bad experience. And I think that's the like the number one sign. That, like, if your players are winning a significant amount of their games and they're walking away being like, man, this was atrocious and I'm dreading having to do it again and it's not fun. It's like, a, you need to, like, take a look at your game mode and be like, okay, what can we do here? And I want to, I want to emphasize the thing that makes it, the thing that makes that be the case is the helpless feeling. It's the fact that... Two of those three losses were in round five in a matchup where I didn't really make any meaningful play mistakes. I simply lost the match at the deck selection screen to polarization. There was actual zero agency. The only thing I could have done differently was elect to play Thanos because Thanos doesn't have any polarized matchups. And it feels, it feels bad to have three three hours of gameplay where just like that's the result split some cards and feel better yeah let's see. what do we got what do we got who do we want to who do we want to we want Thank you for the biddies, Ben. That's very generous of you. We're going to play some ladder to wrap out the day. I'll split a couple of cards on Ben. Thank you for that. We'll be happier playing the ladder. Honestly, I think... Next season, I'm just not going to do Infinite Conquest. Looking, looking back on Wednesday, Friday, and today, they were, in a row, the worst feeling days of snap content I've done in the last month by a lot. And I think part of that's the format, but I think another part of it is that that's just how Infinite Conquest is designed psychologically to make you feel. And I think I just need to opt out of it moving forward. Yeah. Some more gold for the pile.
looking for ones I have ink down that I know I have boosters for. So we can split more. Goblin. A couple of rides on him. How close am I to having 100% gold? Not at all. Infinity. Not at all. I'm probably 75 or 80% of the way to having all an inkter gold on most cards. Sorry, I was I was typing feedback to my second dinner people before I forgot. They like, please, for the love of God, consider changes to conquest, infinite conquest specifically. Infinity. All right, one more one more ride on the split train, huh? Can you spare any collector's reserves? We cannot. I rolled, uh, we rolled Green Goblin twice. We did one Hawkeye and two Green Goblins. I think this will probably be the next card I go for gold on. I want, Green Goblin gets played with Titania a lot. And since my, since my Titania has a God split, it feels only appropriate that we get a Green Goblin that at least somewhat matches her. play on the ladder. Is Justina Satani going to be an ultimate variant? I don't know. But I'll definitely be picking that up and looking forward to moving that split over to it. What was my mainstream game before Snap? Magic the Gathering? Location is still active. Oh Christ! Does this game have any playable modes, chat? The perfect crowds. Yeah, I guess that's the only one, huh? The deck editor. <laughs> Uh... 
How is Balance and Magic the Gathering atrocious? Wizards. Wizards of the Coast is both incredibly slow to make balance changes, and when they eventually do make the changes, they frequently make ones that aren't good. For as much, for as, much as I would prefer if Second Dinner would balance a handful of things in a way different than they have, then it's definitely objectively the case that I prefer their balance candidates to what, uh... To how, what's it called, manage things, Wizard of the Coast? magic has been accused of a lot of things, but being balanced has never been one of them. Yep. I need to play for all three here, yeah? Magic has a balance, Candace. Yes, once a year if you're lucky. It's like Gil David AFKJ. It's Hoaglandia, but you need to be on server 103 to see it. There isn't cross server guilds, unfortunately. doesn't make sense to go so hard on the right because we're going to lose to infant out there anyways. So I should probably put demon here to hedge something like this. Yeah, if you're gonna check it out, I have a link. We did a sponsored segment with them on Friday, which is why I started. Uh, 103 for the server. Has my guild on it. Oh, I forgot wizards change their standard rotation to every three years. Speaking of poor balance candidates. <laughs> what a, what a video game. Oh wait, one more turn on this. We draw Nico and she has demon or draw mode. I wanna wait. Yeah, I definitely think Grave Board is the unlucky is the best uh, faction in that game. Draft mode currently. This deck's just not good. Escaped. Especially not into this location. I didn't want to play more, I don't want to play more Conquest, but I also don't want to play a feature location. <sighs> ah, we've been live for five hours. I want to come back tomorrow. I don't want to play Conquest, so I don't want to play this feature location. Uh, I'll, see, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Marvel Snap. Well, I'll sit here for 25 minutes. Done. We're done with Infinite Conquest in perpetuity. We'll be in a better mood tomorrow after not slogging through a bunch of 4 1 losses. I'm gonna go, go play Beat Saber and then play more AFK Journey because those both sound fun. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Enjoy Sal if you want more stamp today. <laughs>